What's going on YouTube? Three Suns RC come back at you in the bench video. We got the DBX LE 2.0 on the bench today. New to the channel. This thing is huge, guys. This has got to be several inches bigger than the Arma Creighton 8S. It's just gigantic. When you talk about one fifth scale, this is true one fifth scale, guys. Just like our 30 degree north electric conversion in our other video, if you want to check that out. Link in the description. But guys, this thing is huge. We're gonna throw some upgrades on there. And if you saw that video, you know we like to kind of customize some things, do some kind of hobo mods on there. There's gonna be that kind of stuff. But we're also gonna address some weaknesses that the rig has. So we're gonna do your standard upgrades, kind of strengthen up the chassis, all that kind of cool stuff. We got a care package from DGI that we're excited to see what's inside there. Got some hyperflow fans, keep it nice and cool, guys. If you guys like hardcore bashing, installs, custom mods, Traxxas Corral, it don't matter. We just rock what we got, guys. Just consider subscribing. Hope you guys enjoyed the installs. Let's go, baby. All right, care package time. Let's see what's inside. All right, now this looks like to be a diff case from DGI, comes with sealed bearings. And the reason why I've heard these are important because I've heard of people seizing up their bearings with the heat. So this should come in really handy. And here's another diff case, same thing. We also got some DGI two inch and one inch extenders and they come with the nuts on the end there that are uh, got the DGI logo on those. They also come with the pins and the silicone rings, kind of lock those in there. Nice. What I love about all this stuff is the red anodization. Wow, now this is nice, guys. Now what this is, is this is actually the bulkhead. This is a little bit different than uh, some of the other armor rigs and all that kind of stuff I'm used to. So this actually holds the diff, but it's kind of like open, but the diff is encased. So this is a bulkhead and it's uh, it comes with a lot of different pieces, red anodization, and uh, all the screws kind of hold that together. And that's really gonna kind of hold uh, the rear together, the front together uh, for all the impacts that this rig might take. What else we got in here? Man, this is, uh, this is quite a package. Nice. So we have one for the front and the rear with all the screws, all the hardware, the diff cases, the bulkheads, the extenders. Um, and I know I'm going to need the extenders because I'm going to be running some backflips on here. Uh, with the backflips, you need to have at least a one inch extender. I have the two inches if I want to go two inches, but just know with the two inches, you are going to actually risk potentially breaking the arms a little bit more. So we'll kind of see what I like. Uh, balance of performance plus risk of breaking, right? And also we got the DJI. Oh, wow. That's a turnbuckle set, guys. Now that is just sweet. Check these out. These are burly, red, and uh, adjustable links. These are gonna be for, obviously, the steering. This, I think, the smaller ones are for the steering uh, in the front, and then we got the front turnbuckles and then the rear turnbuckles. So it's three different sets, six of them. And it comes with all the necessary hardware to mount these up, guys. I'm excited to get these going, but guys, you don't wanna hear me babble on about the parts. Let's get to installing these parts. And we also got some other parts coming. We got, actually, I think, yeah, there's more in here. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, DJI set the top plate. They kind of mentioned that they might set this over. Appreciate the care package, DJI. This is just, just some tough stuff. This should really hold up to a pound and that we're gonna put this rig through. Guys, this is not gonna be my huge send it rig. This is gonna be for some sends. We wanna stiffen it up, tighten it up for that, but it's gonna be more for ground pounding and really kind of just uh, some mild sends, some mid sends, but we wanna make sure it's in good shape. So what was gonna be just a couple upgrades to strengthen up the chassis has kind of turned into a complete build. Guys, shh, on these, right? I'll get to these chassis braces that I actually did customize later in the build. So just ignore that for a second, but guys, I made this relationship with ADU Racing. Now, I don't know if y'all heard of them, but they're on AliExpress. And if you're looking for some cheaper parts from China, you know, they're going to take a minute to get to you, but they're actually putting out 70, 75. And at first I was like, Hey, it looks like they're just copying stuff, but actually I was wrong. They actually are innovating quite a bit. They're making their own parts. They're thickening up what was stock and kind of doing some cool things out there. Um, so they sent some of these parts out and I did throw some money into this. So I appreciate ADU and uh, the relationship there. Uh, but 70, 75, just the polish on these parts. Uh, just look really tough and they're super thick the, got the uh, obviously the front and rear uh, towers here the rear braces the the front brace the center diff cover this is a center diff holder these are some larger and thicker hinge pin blocks right and uh, so I think they're a couple millimeters thicker and then we have a motor mount here that's gonna help support the motor mount from the back with an end bell support and a sliding motor mount that excuse me, that was loud, uh, that can give it a little bit more support, so that's great. Uh, this is the ESC mount, and that's pretty sweet. They got some carbon fiber mixed in there, and I believe that can hold any ESC that's out there. And this piece right here goes back into the chassis. I'll throw some pictures up so you can see it here. Um, but guys, polish on these parts, 
70, 75, really impressed. I got some springs that came in. They're uh, 3.0 millimeters, I believe. Got some Hyperflow fans because I'm probably gonna be working that stock system pretty hard until I upgrade it. So those are gonna be absolutely necessary. And then to kind of just make everything a little bit cleaner, I got some shock boots right here and some CVD boots. Not really that necessary. You can run it without it. Uh, these, This is a used vehicle, right? So uh, those are needing replacement anyway. And I just want the vehicle to kind of look all brand new. And guys, check out those Method RC tires. Uh, Method RC sent out another set of one fifth scale tires for us to test because honestly, we got too many one fifth scale rigs and they're fighting over these tires because these are awesome these are the belted terraformas and uh they still have the glued option on the website and uh keep around the website because i believe they're coming out with a new tire design Shh, don't tell anybody but hey it's coming out uh they're working on it they're developing it so i'm looking to get that tire on the channel soon guys i'm talking too much you guys want to get to the build this is going to be a monster of a video so if you guys are into builds uh, upgrades and kind of seeing some cool new parts that are coming out there guys these are some great options from ADU. They're a lot cheaper than the other options from China. From who else is sending out 7075 stuff from China? Uh, the, 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 the quality and the, the pricing is just great on these. So check them out. Link in the description for these parts. But let's get to the installs. You guys want to see this thing put together, don't you? All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is remove the suspension front and rear because I'm going to refurbish those anyway. Also the rear wing, the rear cage, and the front cage and bumper uh, because I need to get at the divs and the chassis brace and all that kind of stuff. So let's get at it. All right, so now I'm gonna remove the whole front end off of the truck and that will come off by uh, two screws right up in the top of this top plate right here. Also the two front links right here, I'm gonna detach right there. And then also two more screws from underneath and it should completely come off the truck. That'll give me access to replace the diffs, the top plate and all these turnbuckles and steering links. So I actually was gonna put on the DGI steering links and turn buckles, but um, man, these things are beautiful and I don't wanna ding them up when I'm actually going in and putting in the diffs and the bulkheads and all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna put them on the side for now and uh, I'm actually gonna put these diffs in and um, ignore the diff case. I've actually got this flipped the wrong way on this DGI one. And uh, man, this is just a nice bit of kit. Um, red energization just looks sweet on this. But um, let me get this in here and with that, I'm actually gonna be putting in these ADU hinge pins that actually are quite a bit bulkier than the original stock ones and they're 7075. Nice bit of kit uh, from ADU. But to get at the diffs, you actually gotta undo two screws in the back side of this bulkhead, take the turnbuckles off, and then in the front, the hinge pin washer just pull right off, and then the uh, steering links, or the sway bar links, gotta disconnect those from the back, and then I should have access to get at the diffs, pull it out, and disconnect it from the screws. Yeah, yeah.
Now it's time to drop these diffs into the DJI diff holders. I got this locked down as tight as can be with some blue Loctite and uh, still silky smooth. So I'm working on the front of the truck right now, so I'm making sure to have the diff with the crown gear on this side. And this is where I'm gonna incorporate the ADU racing tower. There's little grooves for these pieces that slide right on there. Oh, that's gorgeous. Now I'm gonna grab these ADU hinge pins. Comes with all the needed hardware. One thing to take note of with these ADU racing hinge pin blocks is actually the different length of the screws. So you might be asking yourself, so how do I know which ones to use where? And I don't wanna do it two or three or four times, which I actually did. And I figured out which ones to do. And probably y'all know this, but I'll point it out for y'all who are watching this video. It's on the inner portion of the truck. So these four spots right here on the inner portion of the truck, you're actually gonna use the shortest ones possible on the inner part. Why? Because on the outer portion, you have the bumper on the front and the bumper on the back. So there's actually a gap. So it doesn't matter when you're reassembling it, just kind of staging up like I have right now, that there's a gap right there. Because it's gonna be a plastic portion of the bumper that's gonna cover that gap. So don't worry about that. Use the smallest ones on the inside and the longer ones on the outside. You should be labeled front, front, rear, rear, that kind of thing. So I take that back. They're actually not labeled. So I'm just gonna have to look at the stock hinge pin blocks and just kind of figure out based upon the shape which one they're supposed to be. How much thicker these things are. Also with the plastic dowels, it's actually pretty easy to lose track of which way these go up, down, sideways, all that kind of stuff. So this is the front of the truck. So they're all the same on the front of the truck. Just make sure that the hole is to the top portion of that oval. So that way the hinge pin shoots through the right uh, angle on that. So in the rear center of the truck, you're actually gonna make sure, just like on the front, that the hole is to the top side of this oval. And on the back, the oval is actually turned sideways for these hinge pins, the hinge pin blocks on the back. So actually, you're gonna make sure that the hole goes towards the inner, part of the truck or closer to the bulkhead. I'm gonna stop and weigh these real quick because I'm gonna weigh every single piece before I put it on there so you can see what the total difference in weight of these pieces are. First the stock, for the bulkhead, hinge pins, motor mounts, I'm gonna weigh everything. It'll be silly. About the hinge pin blocks, there's four of them. It's easy to kind of cross them up with the stock ones and kind of mess up where they actually go. And that will affect how this thing goes back together. So there's two more narrow ones. They're gonna to go towards the inside of the truck. And the way that you'll know that those ones are the ones that go to the center of the truck is actually there's a little divot right in the center, right there, that you can kind of see where it dips down in the center. And also the front one, which we're looking at the front of the chassis right now, there's a little uh, ledge right there where this block will rest on the chassis. That one goes towards the front of the truck. And then the back one, this back block, is just a straight shot. So it's really easy to figure that one out. The back one is super easy, right? This one's super, super thick. And you can see it has those two screw holes that key into the chassis, simple there. And then the front one, you can see this is one probably the second thickest. Um, that just kind of goes straight across the bottom there. And you kind of see there's, there's no detail right there. So it's really simple to figure that one out. So yeah, I hope that helps us uh, so you know which one goes where and you don't mess them up like I did during this video. And now it's time to put the DGI turnbuckles and front steering links back on the rig. And based on my preliminary measurements, they seem to match up almost perfectly to what the stock was. So there is slight adjustments allowed to be put on there, but tighten these down all the way. They should match up pretty perfectly. Front steering turnbuckle.
So you can see I got the steering turnbuckle and the front turnbuckle uh, set up on the left side. I'm about to put the right side on, but I wanted to point something out real quick uh, because on the stock one, you can see that there's this kind of spacer right here that raises up this bolt. Uh, this is for steering clearance, I'm assuming, uh, for when this guy's going back and forth on the turnbuckle there. And uh, this one from DJI doesn't come with that. Well, it's actually impossible to get in there. Maybe it is. I don't know. But to get in there and actually replace that with this stock piece. So what I did is I just took an extra one of those spacers that was actually in the stock one and flipped it the opposite way around uh, to give it some height. And that should be good enough for clearance. Uh, so just be aware of that when you're using these DJIs uh, with the low CDBXLE. I believe you need to add another spacer up there. You could probably use whatever you want in there, but I just use another one of these little spacers that they come with the turnbuckle set. Um, I use the older one and flipped it the other way to kind of raise it up a little bit. So with the front steering turnbuckle, just to kind of show you why we added that spacer earlier, when you bring it back together, you'll see there's that spacer right up on the top when it comes up to that Ackerman. And that just brings it down a little bit so that way it's not too crazy of an angle and doesn't cause the steering to bind, makes it nice and smooth. All right, so next we're going to get the front of the bulkhead installed on here along with this front sway bar retainer. And what we're going to do that is we're actually going to use these longer screws right here in the bottom of the bulkhead right here and the shorter screws up top. And then to work on this uh, front sway bar retainer, there are four included screws right here. We're gonna use some blue Loctite, of course. And you're gonna grab these little grub screws out of here that come out of the stock piece. And you're gonna lock them right into here. Now make sure, obviously you use some blue Loctite here, but you're not wanting to screw this puppy down until it just jams the sway bar in there so it can't move or at least causes a lot of resistance. You just want it to kind of butt up against there and then the blue Loctite will stop that grub screw from coming out the top. You, you still want the freedom of movement in that piece. And then after we get done with this, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the top plate right here and the chassis braces. But man, that thing just looks gorgeous. Look at that, ma'am. Let's go, baby. So when you're removing the rear of the truck, there's only a slight difference is you're actually going to remove this screw and this screw on the other side right here that removes the bulkhead from the chassis braces. And then there's the four bolts right here on the bottom that go into the bulkhead and then the two on the end that go into the back of the hinge pin block. Once you remove all those, the rear end of the truck can just be pulled right off. All right, so the next things I'm going to be installing on the rig are actually this DGI top plate and this ADU Racing front chassis brace. Now, this is going to be super easy to put this on, but guys, when I put it on, I'm actually going to just take off these three screws right here, the one for the chassis brace right here, and these two top plate screws, then that'll lift right off of the truck. When I put it back on, though, I'm going to tighten down the chassis brace all the way, but I'm actually not going to screw down the top plate all the way because that'll make it nice and loose. So that way I can slide the front end of the truck back onto the rig. Let's do it. Boom, baby, piece of cake. Look at that, baby, yeah. Got the top plate done, the front chassis brace is done, and the front and the rear of the truck are totally done. But before we get it all back together, we're gonna actually do the middle of the truck, we're gonna do the motor mount, the center diff mount, we're gonna do the ESC mount, and the rear braces. Let's go. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is get the ESC mount, the center diff mount, and all these rear chassis braces out, the motor out of the truck, so I can clean it all up, make it nice and fine and dandy, ready for these sweet looking ADU racing parts. Man, these things look awesome. Let's get these in the truck. So I'm about to install this ADU racing motor mount, and I want to point something out. Look at the beef of this thing. I'm going to put up on the screen how much thicker that is, but 7075 and significantly thicker. That is definitely going to add some rigidity to the chassis. And of course the slider is a lot more functional because it has a lot more options for different pinion sizes because the stock one's kind of limited on that. Motor mount actually comes, you can see I kind of see the thickness on the bottom there. That coincides with, check this out guys, see where the shaft is going to go through on that motor mount. It's actually lower on the stock than it is on the ADU Racing one. Uh, it might have some advantages when it comes to the drivetrain, I'm not sure, uh, but with the thickness on the bottom, that definitely adds some strength. Um, you'd have to reach out to them for the reasoning behind that, but you can see that they've kind of compensated for the thickness down there on the bottom with the thickness of this end bell support that's really gonna support all the different type of engine options that you would want to put in this motor mount. Okay, so I'm going to start with ADU Racing motor mount on the truck. But all the hardware is included, and I'm actually going to be using the stock firmer 160 ESC to start with. I know it's kind of underpowered for how heavy this rig is going to be, but I'm going to start with it for now. Um, and I want to let you know that if you're using this ESC with this plate for the ESC, 
that it actually is designed to be used with like a Max 5 XLX2 because of all these sliders is meant to have the screws come up from underneath and screw into the bottom of the ESC. Um, well, with the Firma 160, it has tabs on the side, makes it a little bit too wide to fit in here. But if you turn it sideways, the ESC, you can actually get two of the screws to match up slightly. You just got to kind of turn the ESC just a little bit to get one here and here. And then I'm just going to do a zip tie with a tape and it's going to be super, super secure. And I'll let you know, I'm reaching out to ADU Racing if they actually revise this plate so that it does work with the stock one. But no big deal if it has two of the four screws, some tape and some e some uh, some zip ties. Not a big deal, guys. Uh, but wanted to let you know about that if you're using with that. And then also... When you're mounting it to the chassis, you're going to remove this plastic piece that's here, uh, the end bell support that comes with the stock. You're going to remove that one right here because it comes with one right here, and you can see it matches up right here, and then this guy is going to slap up against it, and the screws will go through those holes down on the bottom into the base of this end bell support and match up really nicely, and there is a screw right here to kind of adjust for the different sizes of the motors. Guys, look how much thicker this ADU Racing motor mount slide is. You can just see that's a lot more beef. 7075, that is going to lock it in. There might be a better way to do this. Comment down below if there is. But this is the way I figured out how to actually put this together. Is you don't want this to be screwed on to the top yet. You just want to kind of make note of the angle of the wires in the back. Uh, with the slider in the front for where you're going to use your holes. Just kind of keep note of that. Because basically, this will clearly not slip through that. Nor will the wires. So what you'll have to do you have to straight shot it. So you're going to have this all attached and you're going to straight shot it straight through, right? Then you're going to attach the front of the motor slider on there based upon what you made note of, right? And then you're going to put the slider, the slider into the motor mount and attach the motor mount. Man, that is sturdy. I haven't even tightened everything down all the way. That is impressive. I'm not going to use Loctite right now because I might have to finally adjust these later when I set the mesh and I put the pinion in there. And then this one goes underneath into the bottom of the slide. Again, Loctite later. I'm just staging it up right now. I am. That thing is beautiful and solid things going nowhere. Okay, so now we're gonna actually install the ADU Racing uh, center diff mount and the top plate. This is actually two different parts on the website and it comes with this uh, kind of 3D printed piece that's actually gonna attach to this center top plate and I believe that's for wire management. So we're gonna put that together, it's pretty simple. It is uh, just two screws right here and then there's actually two little like, um, what is that, cutouts that lock in there. So it's almost like it has four screws in there to lock in stability wise. And then uh, the four on the top. All right, guys, two ways to skin a cat. Yeah, that's a terrible phrase, I know. But yeah, two different ways to put this in. You guys should do it all at one time, one piece with the center diff and all that kind of stuff. I didn't do that. I already got the rear end bell kind of all locked in. So what I did in order to get to the center diff mount and to lock that in, you actually just undo these three screws. Uh, I didn't take them completely out, just loosen them up quite a bit. So that way this raises up a little bit. And then you could slide in from the side, uh, the center diff mount and and the top plate and put that all together. Now I was just testing real quick to see which thread goes deeper in because there's actually two long screws and two short screws. This one has the longer thread, so I'm gonna use the longer screws on this side, of course.
All right, so now that I got this in there, I can clearly tell that this is not for wire management. There's really no place for the screws to, to, for the wires to get in there. And if they did, the diff would eat it up completely. So as you can clearly see, it's a diff protector. So that way um, your cords and wires from your batteries don't get eaten up in the diff. I mean, that makes perfect sense. All right, so that's the center diff mount. All good. I'm going to install these ADU Racing rear chassis braces. Now, one thing I really appreciate about these braces, besides the fact that they're 7075, is a lot of the braces out there I've seen have uh, all this kind of webbing, right? And that strengthens it up. That's great, but they're always there's a hole right there in between, and it just kind of goes through. Uh, well, this is actually sealed off, and there's like, I don't know, about like a millimeter or two of extra material that actually encloses these braces. I'm guessing that's got to help, besides having the webbing. Just a little bit extra material. They're not afraid to throw that extra extra 7075 up there. I think it looks slick and adds some strength. But the way I'm going to install this into the truck is I'm actually going to put it in just like it is right now. Now, you might not purchase this ESC mount, and that's what this little piece is. This is to the ESC mount. You might not purchase this together, and you can use it without it. But because I'm putting in there together, I'm going to actually put in all three of these pieces at the same time. And the reason being because on this end right here, there's a circular kind of insert. But on this side, you can see it's kind of octagonal, or if that's a word, I don't know. Just comment down below if it is or not. I don't know. But you can see it's octagon, right? So it's not going to just slide on after the fact. So I'm going to put it in all at one time. And then I'm going to bring in this top plate. I'll have to remove these four, these two screws right here. And I've already put the pillar. This pillar comes with the ESC plate too. I've already kind of put that in there. That's super easy. A little bit of Loctite down the bottom. And that's going to support it. And it's just going to kind of sit right over top. And I'll probably move this motor and rotate it around because these wires are getting in the way. One thing I want to point out is just like with the stock brace and all that kind of stuff, you have these cutouts in the chassis and uh, they kind of match up with the braces. So despite having three screws to kind of lock in this chassis, there's actually a little a cutout right here. So it's almost like they have four screws to lock in key position right there. And the same thing with the rear brace. You have these two screws right here and then a keyed in position right there just to strengthen up that position. Now I'm using the stock ESC, so you might be asking yourself, why am I screwing this all down? Well, because I'm using the stock ESC, I will not be using the four screws that are included to uh, put like an XLX2 or a Max 5 in here because they'll screw it to the bottom. And really, I'm just trying to show you all how to actually install it. But normally, yeah, you would actually keep this plate off, mount the ESC to this plate, and then put the plate on. Man, that is sturdy. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be adding some extra hobo mods to the side for some extra bracing. All right, so with these chassis braces, right, they come down and shoot all the way towards the center diff mount, making it kind of one solid piece. Then you have this center brace right here or the center diff mount that locks up the center, so strengthens up the center of the chassis and then the front braces just kind of causing one continual flow of strength and then you have this extra bracing now i know this is carbon fiber not quite as good as if it was 70 75 it looks super sweet and it is very strong i think this is three or four millimeters so this should definitely help way over what the stock was uh, but because this is 70 75 and this is 70 75 um, this should still hold up really well but i am going to add a side brace there but this triangulation of strength also uh, don't forget this motor mount is significantly more beefcake with the fact that it has this rear end bell support. You might think that's just for the motor, but guys, that actually strengthens up the chassis as well. Just adds a little bit more rigidity and ties it all together. And I just love how all these ADU racing parts just kind of work all together. The braces right up to the center diff mount, locks up to the ESC mount that goes right back into this uh, back support. This goes actually back into the rear bulkheads of the actual vehicle and uh, the braces down below and then tying into the end bell support and all that kind of stuff. It's just kind of one cohesively well-designed unit. So great job on ADU Racing designing a really solid solution here for the DBX LE. Uh, all the parts installed. Now we got to slide the rear and the front of the truck on. Oh, wait. I already did it. Hey, guys, I'm just going to explain it real quick. No big deal. This is super easy, guys. Uh, so make sure you get your center shaft all lined up. Don't forget that. You know, get everything all buttoned on, and then you have the center shaft. We've all done that before, guys. So make sure you have your center shaft. Just slides right onto the truck, and then secure it with two bolts just to kind of be placeholders right there in the back. 
and that'll lock everything in and the keyed in position for this bulkhead will lock right in. Now in the front, it's a little bit more tricky. Now I don't know if that was because I did slightly bend this chassis or it was bent when I got it. It was a used truck and I bent it back or if it was just a little bit of tolerances. But guys, on the front, if you're having difficulties getting this bulkhead to kind of slide in, what I did is I slid it on and I couldn't kind of, I couldn't get these keyed in positions to slide in and to drop in. So what I did is uh, when I got them hovered over these spots, I put these two screws in and I just tightened them up. And as I tightened them up, that kind of pulled in those keyed positions through those holes to kind of lock it into the chassis. I was having a hell of a time trying to get this thing locked in and I was getting really frustrated. And that's all I needed to do. Before you're bringing this bulkhead and sliding this in, obviously this has to be looser. Um, I didn't have any kind of clearances, no clearance issues when it comes to the top of the bulkhead. Someone told me that they're gonna have issues with this bulkhead and the 2.0, it actually works fine. You can see the top of the gear case, there's plenty of clearance for that Ackerman to slide back and forth. So it's not gonna rub, even if the chassis flexes, that's totally fine. So it all fits up great compatibility wise so hobo mod time guys uh do you need to do this no um, obviously with all these uh, extra upgrades uh, you don't really need to do this i just like to get a little silly with the sends and you know if you land bad i want to protect it as well as i can now one thing i do like is actually with this ad racing uh esc plate it actually acts as a brace it comes back from this motor mount or top plate right here and it actually goes in the esc plate and then there's a brace that goes right back into the bulkhead so that's almost like a third brace because you have this one here this one here and then that one down the middle um, that's really going to strengthen up but i want to add another one just for the heck of it guys what you want to do is adder the Arma Creighton 8S ones, not the Outcast ones, because you're going to need this really long one, right? I did cut this one down. Um, this is the longest one, just cut down a little bit to match up with the bulkhead in the back, and then this top plate right here. And then this one, I'll put up the millimeter up here. I'm not sure which one this is, but I'll measure it for you. And this is just kind of attached right here and here. So for the front one, you can kind of see that it actually is screwed out a little bit, but those screws are really, really long. So it's still going to actually strengthen up the front end a little bit. And that's going to just add like a, like a triangulation to the front end and just kind of toughen up the front end a little bit. Um, you can see I use a stock hardware and I didn't have to clip off the bottom of that little piece, that plastic end right there here. But for the rear one, this is the crate and long one. And you can see after I move these stinking pieces, is that I had to kind of cut off the bottom piece so it'll lay flat on the ESC. And then on this back one right here, I clipped and sanded with a Dremel, that inside one, so that it kind of went straight shot into the front here, or the center actually. Can't remember if I used the stock hardware right here or if I found a much longer one because you are spacing that out a little bit and you do need that screw to go all the way into the center piece. So you want to use a really long, I think there's a five millimeter bolt to go all the way through there. Do you need this? No, but it's red and it looks cool. And just to kind of help with a little bit reduction in the flex, I just wanted to toughen up the chassis just a little bit because like I said, I do get a little silly at times. And if you want to kind of do a little bit of hobo mod, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Now, just to kind of showcase these DJI parts that I've installed on the rig real quick, I didn't do an install video for these because guys, if you can't put these on on your own, maybe you're in the wrong hobby. This is really simple. These are the one inch extenders. Got the bulkheads and the diff holders right here in the back. Just looks super clean, super tough. Gonna kind of hold that uh, tower up there. Really tough for rear impacts. And then you can see the backside. Just love all the DJI logos. Uh, yeah, if we like aesthetics, and stuff like that. I don't mind it. I do like how clean it looks and the silver and red looks sweet on there. And then up in the front, we got the top plate. Really thick and burly on that. And of course the front bulkheads and diff covers and then the steering turnbuckles, front turnbuckles and the front side right there. Just really clean stuff from DGI. Super impressed with the quality and how this all went together. And I think that red matches up with the Arma stuff that I put on there. Just like super clean. So I appreciate DGI sending out this stuff. You see in the back, I also got some two inch extenders if I want to use them from DGI. Now, all these ADU racing parts really seem to match up really well with the DGI and the red on there. You can see the front blocks, uh, the center blocks for the hinge pins, that front brace. Now, this is the center diff mount, which rolls right into the motor mount. And you can kind of see that's a nice slider, super thick and burly on that with the end bell support. Just really nice. And you can easily mount a fan on there if you wanted to. And then the ESC plate that goes straight back into what's kind of like a chassis brace into the back of the bulkhead, like I mentioned earlier. The rear brace is this long one goes up the whole entire chassis right up to the backside of the center diff cover or the motor mount, actually. And then you got the secondary brace on the other side. Now, I do want to mention uh, besides these parts here. Oh, and these shock towers, man. Look at that. 
And these shock towers are, I think, up to 11 millimeters thick. These things are super burly. And I did want to mention that um, ADU Racing also does make their own bulkheads, but I had the DJI one, so I didn't mess with those. But you can see on the website that they have those made by their own selves. And on AliExpress, you'll see that they also have a chassis that they put out. Um, we'll see if I actually need that. Um, it looks super sweet, uh, but it is pretty thick, and I don't know what, if I want to add the extra weight. And obviously, I'm going to put a total right down here on the screen um, for the stock over here versus the upgraded rig over here. You tell me if that difference is worth it. I think it's marginal at best, the differences between those two numbers and what you're going to get in terms of stability, uh, ground control, and also durability. Gives you kind of peace of mind when you're sending it. Guys, I think that's definitely worth it for the upgrades. There. I really think it's minimal. Sometimes you add some heavy-duty tires, and that's adding two or three pounds to the rig. So I really don't think that these numbers are really anything to be scared about. Uh, so, hey, guys, check out these parts. Uh, links in the description for all the different parts on here. So now we've got the front of the truck, the rear of the truck, Let's get the body posts on and all the extra stuff, the front and the rear bumper, get them cleaned up and get the body on. And then we're going to do a quick overview with some Method IC tires. All right, so got the front bumper back on the rig. There's six screws on there. You want to start with the two that are up there by the bulkhead first. Makes it easier than the two right here by the bumper and the two underneath. Pretty simple. Got some new springs on here and some boots. Just kind of want to clean up the shocks, make them a little bit more refurbished and nice and clean on there. And you can see that sweet looking Hyperflow fan in there. Going to be needful because I am running the stock system like I mentioned earlier. And I had to cut a bigger hole to make room for that big old fan coming out the top of the ESC. There's another one on the motor as well. And the back bumper is on as well. So if you made it this far into the video, you're absolutely awesome. Appreciate you guys for hanging out with us. Hope you guys enjoyed it. The installs and all that kind of stuff. We like to do that time to time. Besides the bashing, we like to show you all how to do this stuff. Uh, it's complicated. It can be kind of tricky. So hope you guys learned something. But if you're not subscribed, you've watched this much, why not do that as well? So super appreciate that if you consider it. Also, we're going to get this DBXLE out. We're super excited for that. We're probably going to do a tire test. We're going to test out these TIT racing knobbies. We also got these uh, Method RC tires, the Terraformers. These are super and fantastic. Uh, so love these tires. Maybe try out some uh, arm and back flips and stuff like that. Show you the air control and the handling characteristic differences with those with those uh, tires on the vehicle. So you can kind of see for yourself if you like that. And you can see in the background, we've got the Corralia Suga lurking. We did a couple bashes with this already. Video is going to be up on the channel soon, but this rig handles fantastic. You're going to love that video. Before I say peace out, I want to thank you guys. We just hit 5,000 subscribers at Three Sons RC. It really means a lot that there's that many people watching our stuff. Um, you know, we never thought we'd get here, and, you know, we've taken some breaks, and it really means a lot that you all still support us. I uh, also want to say a quick shout-out to DJI Racing for all the parts that they sent out, ADU Racing for sending out the parts, uh, Hyperflow fans. Uh, we threw some money at this vehicle, guys, but obviously some sponsorship was involved here, so we super appreciate that. Um, TIT Racing Method rc guys there's, there's so many people to thank for this video uh that brought this together and uh this rig is sweet this dbxle 2.0 gosh this guy's guys this is true one fifth scale if you want a real one fifth scale hey not to knock arma and the outcast and the crate and i love those rigs but this is a monster and we're gonna get bashing on this rig if you want to see that type of stuff let's get going hit that subscribe see you guys later peace out